Hey, what's up, Packers fans? It's Aaron Nagler with Cheesehead TV, and I'm here with a very special guest, the publisher, if you please, of Packer Report. It's Ross Uglum. Ross, how the hell are you, man? I'm good, Nags. Thanks for having me on. I think this is I can't my, believe uh, this is the first my, time you've been on. <laughs> way, way too long. Way, way too long. Let's, let's, let's not let that happen again. Uh, great to talk to you. Great to see you. Uh, this is a 12 free zone for anyone tuning in, wondering uh, what, what you know, latest drama might be happening with the quarterback. I'm not here to talk about that. I wanted to get Ross on to talk about these draft picks, and mostly because I see you doing the work. It's all yeah. over your Twitter feed as far as looking at the tape. Um, you know, and I, I do a cursory glance once they get picked, and I love having new guys to you know don the green and gold, and I'm a big fan. But I know you're doing the deep dive, so I wanted to talk to you. And I'll start with the offensive line because hell, they got three new offensive linemen. Obviously, I think Myers probably has the best chance to kind of hit right away or at least play right away. What's your take on what Gutekunst found there along the offensive line during draft weekend? Well, you know, he's going to be interesting because I think for better or for worse, he'll always be uh, compared to Creed Humphrey. You know, if you um, right. go and look at like our our guy, Mark Echo, has a contact still in the NFL. So we get a scout's take on each pick every year. And this was, you know, kind of his take was, well, Humphrey just kind of does everything that Myers does a little bit better. So I'm not sure why they did that. And and this guy was honestly, he was very complimentary of the Stokes pick in, in even ways I didn't agree with and very, very complimentary of the Amari Rogers pick. So it wasn't like a somebody from a rival team that just wanted to dump on everything right. they did. But he just said, hey, you know, we thought or I thought that Creed did everything a little bit better. So he'll always be sort of viewed in that light. And he and Royce Newman really have a lot of the things, you know, they they do the same very well, which is they're both very quick off the ball. Uh, Myers plays with a with a little bit of a nasty, but kind of both guys that, again, are, are not. And this seems to be sort of the 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 theme if you will of of these guys that they take a chance on is um they're not people movers you know you you don't they're not road graders right right you're not gonna see you know myers like grab a zero tech and 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 (laughs) displace him three yards or or even on zone you're not gonna see him you know grab that that front side three and move him out of the way and, and have that huge cutback lane behind him it's on the film it's just not it's just not consistent. So that's, I think, sort of been there. I, I tweeted out a stat about the um, uh, pass blocking efficiencies of all these guys they've taken. And that's really been, I think, their top priority is just get guys in college who don't give up sacks and don't give up pressures. And then Stenovich will just teach them all of the rest of the things that they right. need to know. And by the way, if they're a good athlete, that helps too. I was just going to say, and the thing that they love is the feet. You know, these guys all can move. Yep. You talk about the tape. It's all there. Um, some better than others. But as, as you're saying, they definitely love athletes uh, along the line. And, yes, they have to be able to pass block. Obviously, always been – hell, that's been the number one kind of goal as far as who they select going back to Ted, going back to Ron. So I don't think that's a surprise. Um, w- when you look at kind of the the makeup of the line, how do you expect these guys to fit in? Do you think – Maybe more than maybe uh, more than one guy has a shot at playing this year. Or do you think it's just Myers and the other two will develop? I, I I mean I think it's Myers and the other two will develop. But at the same time, this is not you know right now, and and I don't know a hundred percent the Veldier situation. But Wagner obviously isn't back. Bakhtiari isn't ready. Um, right. As of right now, of course, there's no game on Sunday, as, as you sometimes like to <laughs> say. When time. do they play on? Yeah, we when do they play time. on Sunday? But right. um, you know, I think ultimately they really believe that Elton and David and, and Billy Turner will be for sure uh, three of the five starters. I would guess they're going to give John Runyon Jr. every opportunity in the world um, to be the fourth uh, or Lucas Patrick if they want to go down that road again. But I just think, you know, you look at Myers and if they can get him ready, that's your day one center. And and I think they hope they're probably an eight year center, you know, right. a rookie deal right. and then an, an extension and then um, wave goodbye to him. Like they wave goodbye to almost every other offensive lineman after, yeah. their, after their second deal. But it's interesting to me, the number one thing that I'll watch with these guys moving forward and with a number of these selections that they've made, because they did go three times with Hanson and Stepaniak and JRJ is like, you know, the old Packers used to just take tackles. 
and tackles right, and tackles and tackles, and tackles and tackles. Yeah, and the now, interior kind of caught me off guard a little bit. I'm it reminds me of that one game where um, everybody was hurt and like Lane Taylor started right. at left Lane tackle. Lane Taylor was at left tackle. They played it was a four, Thursday nighter, wasn't it? Yeah, against they the played Bears? four guards right. in a center right. and one, I think. <laughs> yeah. They, yeah, so they, they might have got they might have become a little bit uh, in love with the four guards. <laughs> I, that's but that's that's the thing to me is really, really, really can Royce Newman play right tackle? Because yeah, right. I think there is a world after Billy Turner, especially with this much versatility, which is what they talk about, right. what they love. And the versatility is great. And having Van Lannan be able to play this or that or Stepaniak be able to play this or that or having Newman be able to play this or that. That's all fine. But somebody actually has to start at right tackle and, the, and and needs to be kind of the person of the future. So they have to figure out who that is or at some point here um, acquire that player. Now, let's stick on the offensive side of the ball. You mentioned Amari Rogers a little earlier. Um, talk about a fun new toy. You yeah. talk, looking at if anybody if you haven't looked at Ross's Twitter feed, he has got some fun tape of this kid. Um I, you talk about a spark plug. It's interesting how he's obviously going to be much more than just f- insert into Tyler Irvin role, but I do think they will utilize him that yeah. way. I think they'll also utilize him as a traditional slot. Do you think this is something that he will hit the ground running, so to speak? I know we've already heard Brian and Matt mention he'll probably start day one as the returner. Um, I don't think that's a surprise, but do you think he'll hit the ground running in this offense or will it take some time? I think you're hopeful that it's immediate um, and it might be immediate just based on lack of competition. You know, if they don't bring Irvin or Austin back and they're just like, Hey kid, here you go. You know, they taught that role to Tyler Austin in a week and a half, basically. So um, you would hope, and and maybe it is just, you know, we have a 30% of our snaps roll for you. um, And it includes five touches and they are, two handoffs and this screen play, and then we're going to have you run a deep post twice and maybe we throw it to you once. But the more you you get him into the year, then, yeah, I think you can kind of expand what he's asked to do. But what he's asked to do right away, um, I think, can be easy. And it's a lot of the fakes and a lot of stuff that they ran for, for Irvin and Austin. And then as he progresses as a player, then you put in – you know, more advanced things. I think you could definitely see, and everybody loves to do this comparison with Randall Cobb. I think you could absolutely say a very similar career path where you go back to rookie Randall Cobb. Yes. He scores that touchdown against the saints when he runs the wrong route, the wrong route. Right. (laughs) And, and, you know, he's, he's a part of the offense a a little bit. They have specific things for him. Right. But then as a sophomore, he just wrecked the league, you know, in his second year. And I'm not saying don't expect anything from Armari Rogers until 2022 but don't be super surprised if he doesn't kill the league until that year but the thing with Amari Rogers I'm gonna throw my buddy Thor uh Nystrom from NBC under the bus on this is he was given given that Packers such a hard time for finally pulling the, the the trigger on a receiver and taking what he called a glorified running back and that's fine and Thor and I are very different on you know he's wide receiver 22 for Thor um, he, I think he was wide receiver 12 for me. And after like watching every game, I bumped him just ahead of Nico Collins and Emlyn Ross St. Brown for wide receiver 10, just because the Packers picked him. I didn't, you know, say he's wide receiver three or do anything like that. I just meant like, yes, I didn't all the five, nine guys. I watched two games of and moved on with my life because they've never done it. So why right. would I, exactly. why would I bury the time into that tape? Um, but well, what's interesting yeah. with Rodgers is his build is he's yes, so, so much thick. more physical. He's so much more physical than uh, obviously than Irvin ever was. And I do it, wonder right. like how much of this is them. OK, we, we got to find a guy who not only can be utilized the way they utilized Irvin, but who can also deliver a hit and take a hit and, and that's not that's, be knocked out when that happens. That's why he's exactly what they need. Could they have drafted another savvy route runner to play wide receiver two across from Devontae Adams. Could they have taken Rashad Bateman, who I had plenty of noise around him that they yeah, loved him? Right. Yes, yeah. 100%. I think if Baltimore doesn't go, that's that's what they do. However, for what they need and what they don't have, more importantly, yeah. what they don't have, that's this kid. He had more broken or just about, I think, I, you'd have to go back and look at the tweet, but I put out the, the number of 
missed tackles forced yes. by Green Bay's I entire wide receiver yeah. core, and right. then missed tackles forced just by Amari Rodgers. <laughs> and they were either equal or close. And Pretty then you think close, about right. and then you think about how many total receptions MVS EQ Devonte yada yada had. This kid is a yak machine, and they don't have that on the roster at all. All not correct, not not right. big Bob. Not, I mean, maybe if you get the ball to Aaron Jones in space, but he just for all of the things that they don't have or didn't have in this offense, this kid has the ability to be. Yep, totally agree there. And I think you know, it's going to be interesting to see if they utilize him in the backfield as well. Like, not maybe not as in like in an I form or whatever, but you're talking about Randall Cobb, the way McCarthy had Cobb in the backfield, the way they <clears throat> excuse me, the way they utilized Ty Montgomery back in the day. Wouldn't surprise me to see this kid get a couple snaps, you know, in the offensive backfield just to keep defensive coordinators guessing. Um, when you look at uh, the first pick, first uh, the first round pick, you look at the speed. Obviously, it jumps off the tape at you. It's so funny hearing Packers fans like, "Oh, he wasn't the highest rated corner or whatever." But it, how many years have we watched this Packers defense, especially in the playoffs, and said, "Man, the other the opponent just looks so much faster than the Packers." Yeah. It's nice. It's nice to finally get a guy who maybe isn't the best corner. I think he can develop into a really solid starter. But hell, you cannot teach speed, and this kid has got it in droves. He does. Um, you know, I think you just pray for him that somebody on that defensive staff can kind of mold him because right. the tools are so there. The difference for me with him and King is that so is the production. He was a, a very productive cornerback and a, and a skilled cornerback in a conference that had a million NFL wide receivers. I mean, wide you go back to right. all the dudes that played at LSU and then all the dudes that played at Alabama, and you even go and look at some of the guys he must have played against in uh, practice at Georgia, talk about Kadarius Tony and, right. um, and, and Pitts, who I'm sure he had to cover in some way um, at, at Florida, all the ways they used him. And he didn't get torched. In fact, they barely threw it over there. So, right. yes, I well, that's what I got bored watching his tape for that very reason. It, like, there's just there's no action because they yeah. he hardly gets thrown at. You'd love to get like his three targets cut up and then just consume all of his targets because yep. otherwise it's just a waste of time, a hundred percent. Um, but yeah, you you know you watch him, and I agree with Andy, and I agree with Ben Fennel, and I agree with some of the guys that no, it's not always great at the top of the route. His change, he is a little tight. You'd like to see the hips looser. You'd like to see the ankles looser. You'd like, you know, because because Jair is so twitchy and so fluid and so, you know, kind of able to work in space. And and Stokes is a beautiful is, is a burner, and it's beautiful when you can see it and really see him open up. Um, but it's a lot of the stuff that people got frustrated with Kevin King. You know, you, you see somebody cross his, his face on an inbreaker and he doesn't click and close the way that you'd like a guy that tests the way that he tests to click and close. Sometimes too, at the top of the route, you'll see balance issues. He ends up on the ground a lot, which is kind of crazy. And then yeah. he gets a little bit grabby, but he, like I said, they didn't throw it over there. And when they did, it wasn't great. You know, he had a, like a 46 yeah. passer rating against in the SEC. Um, and, and no, his ball skills aren't great. I mean, a lot of the picks that are on his tape are thrown right to him. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, as so far what, as just not allow, and I think this is kind of the point of playing corner, and then I'll let you go. It's like right, right. my my goal is to make sure my guy doesn't catch the football. And he's pretty good at that part. He's pretty good at that, right? Exactly. I mean, that's the thing. It's Yeah, there's a lot to work on. The one thing, the one kind of uh, I worry, I guess I'd have about this kid is the penalties. You know, it's like, yeah, we've been down this road with Josh Jackson, been down this road with Mod Carroll back in the day. Like the idea that the panic sets in and he grabs and that's going to cost you. That's obvious. A number one, you can't, you, you can't be put on the field if you're going to be, grabbing guys and costing huge yardage by, via penalty, et cetera. Other than, you know, I do think that's correctable. We have seen other guys have that issue and have it coached out of them. I just wonder, like, is that going to happen in Green Bay? I, I mean, I'm not throwing anybody under the bus there. I'm just saying, like, that certainly hasn't happened with Josh Jackson. You saw him grabbing against the Buccaneers when he had to play last year, you know, and he's three years in the league. So um, that is my probably my one worry with him. Finally, let's, take, let's stick on the defensive side of the ball and – take a quick look at this Boston college linebacker, because it's funny when I look at his game, I see 
a lot of see ball, get ball, heat seeking guy. Like he's not afraid of contact. Um, I do worry though about centers, guards getting up on him on the second level and kind of erasing him. That's that was that's what jumps out to me. Yeah, and, and it's it's all over on his film, and that's you know, um, I think he can be a great special teams player, but that's kind of where I am with him. Uh, maybe, maybe he's a sub linebacker and he comes in and he tries to cover tight ends and backs and stuff like that. Yeah. But, and, and you're, you're not usually, and I know he's kind of sort of where they took um, Kamal Martin or in that general area. And he's also, you know, they, they've been very comfortable playing Chris Barnes. So they didn't even draft, but this, <laughs> this kid just reeks of like an Oren Burks replacement. Like maybe we're going to yeah, move on from Oren exactly Burks and not, necessarily is he going to achieve all the things that we hoped and prayed that Oren Burks would achieve that we traded up for that we took in the top 100 etc cetera, etc cetera. Oren Burks's actual current role on the Green Bay Packers which is be the last line of oh my god everybody got hurt at linebacker can you please come in and play and not embarrass yourself but can you also be a very good and very useful special teams player and that's where I see McDuffie I'd be glad to be wrong but boy um, you you look at him trying to disengage from blocks, or yes. you look at him trying to pop offensive line. It's just not in there. It's not in the tape, and you can see him carrying some tight ends down the seam. See him running with some running backs. You can see him do some functional stuff in coverage. That's okay. Uh, but you just look at at kind of his attitude and the, like you said, the sea ball hit ball stuff. His speed. I do think for sure. Special teams, Maven potential, yeah, right. um, but boy, like, you're right. I mean, it's, it's as fun as it is to be optimistic and well, he could do this <laughs> or he could do that. Right. The tape just shows teams, and that's kind of it. But hey, um, man, the world needs ditch diggers too. So oh, you know, for I'm, sure, and they definitely. I, need I'm in special on it. Teams. They didn't pay. They didn't overpay for it this time. No, unlike with Burks, you know, right, who was right, and that's a failed project. That that was, you know, a kid, kid played safety, then he moved up to linebacker. They fell in love with the athletic testing that said, oh, we'll get him with this coach and he'll be great at this and this. And it just, it never happened. And and there's so much vitriol there because of the capital given up to, exactly. to select it. Yeah, it's, it's going to be really interesting to see how this plays out as far as new scheme, new pieces, new responsibilities. I think, you know, obviously – Barnes and Martin are probably your your guys, and like you said, this is uh, McDuffie's there as a you know depth slash teams guy. But man, one injury and all of a sudden you're playing guys you weren't planning on playing, and uh, we'll see how that shakes out. No doubt I'd, about it. I'd be interested if that isn't the one spot that they do check the veteran scrap heap for, right? And just yep. <laughs> kind of look around Agreed. in there and see what's in there, and, and and sort of move forward that way because it was a specific position they wanted to address early. And they didn't, and he admitted it. And yeah. so that's where I'm kind of like, okay, eyes open for, and I'm I don't have the top no, but line by off the top. Of who my might head, be but, available yeah. now, but who might be cut? You know, right. uh, waiver claims, may, maybe even a trade late in late in camp. And those are all possibilities at this point. I think that's um, there's no doubt about that. Ross, I can't thank you enough, man, for uh, hanging out, uh, talking Packers with me. Like you said at the top, man, let's let's not wait so long next time. Let's do this again real soon, man. Thanks, Aaron. I appreciate it.